All right, we're back on the Project XJ and we've got the heater box out of the Jeep to replace the heater core and the evaporator core. And uh, there wasn't really any evidence of the heater core leaking, which is that unit right there. But here on the evaporator core, this whole bottom was saturated with a refrigerant oil and dye. So we definitely had an evaporator core leak. So we got two new pieces for that and we're going to go back together with it. All right, so we've got everything back together. Um, if you've never had one of these heater boxes out, there's five bolts holding it in. There's one, two, three, four, and then there's one tucked way back there in the corner that I get with a long extension and it went back into this hole here. But you can see here, we've got new evaporator core and heater core pipes coming out and we've reconnected these lines and we are ready to officially start going back together with this project. All right, so we've got this heater box back in and we're gonna go through here and reconnect these connectors that were disconnected. And then I've already put the cover back on where the uh, fresh air versus the recirculate uh, actuator is. Now, now that everything there is attached, um, we've got these two screws that the dash pivot on. So I'm gonna put those in there like two or three turns. And then there's a fork on the dash assembly of the carrier that uh, this slides into, and then we can pivot the dash up and then start these studs and these smaller bolts at the top. So there's gonna be one of these on each side. It's an M8125 with a 13 millimeter head. So I've got that one put in and let's go over here and get the other one put in. Okay, now that we've got the dash carrier back in, we'll go ahead and tighten all the bolts. So remember, there's gonna be one on each side. That's a 13 here. And then across the top, we've got um, this one right here, that one right there, um, another one over here in the corner. So there's gonna be six across the top. So we'll start by attaching those bolts to the dash across the top. Those are 10 millimeter head. And remember, there's gonna be four bolts and two nuts. And then you're gonna move on to the two side bolts, which are the 13 millimeter. And then there's that support bracket for the center that has four 13 millimeter bolts. Once we get all this tightened, we're ready to make electrical connections. Right, one of those uh, electrical connections, the first one's gonna be this big bulkhead connector that goes right here. So it's gonna plug in right there like that. And then it's got a 10 millimeter that you'll tighten here and don't over tighten that, but just you're gonna tighten it to where it's just wrist tight and it'll uh, seat this connector down in here. We've got an airbag connector here. We will fish that up through here. And then that's gonna plug in right here on this. Now you've got two big connectors down here that are both uh, also have that 10 millimeter bolt and they're gonna connect back in here. Uh, you can see right there the receptacle for those to attach. Now we're ready to put the brake switch back in. That little guy looks like this. And what I do is I normally go ahead and readjust them while I've got them out. So uh, take the plunger and you'll hear an audible click. 
and that is pulling the plunger away from the body. And then I depress the brake pedal a little bit and put the switch back in there, twist it to lock it into place and let the brake pedal fall back to resting position. And you heard that click and just give it a little more adjustment. Right there, you'll pull the brake pedal back to where the, the little plunger clicks back in. And then now that brake pedal should be adjusted for that switch. So we'll verify that once we get everything put back together and get the battery hooked back up. And over here on this side, we have that vacuum connector. And that's gonna be for all the HVAC controls. That'll just click back in place. And then that just stays tucked right there in the corner. We've already connected the heater box controls. Uh, we have our antenna cable here for the radio. The thing kind of snaps into, let me use two hands here on that one. All right, that snapped back in place. I just need to grasp a hold of both sides. So now that we have that thing back on, um, there's a clip right here. I'm not sure where that went um, or what this tape goes to. I think that's tape to hold this wire harness in from the factory. But what we're going to do is just tuck this antenna cable right back in there. And then the trim panel will come up here and it'll cover up this area. Okay, addressing the rust in the floorboard, what we've done is taken a scraper and knocked off the top of all of this loose rust and... You can't really tell right here, but we've taken a scotch bright disc on a grinder and knocked off the top of all of these rusty areas here. Uh, so there's a little bit here under the passenger seat, a little bit back here in the corner uh, underneath the back floor carpet. And then of course this big area right here in the front passenger floorboard. Now this thing is sat outside and I don't know why it had water in here unless maybe they had a broken window at some point in time and let it rain, but it's been sitting outside here. And when I pulled the carpet out, it was not wet. So I'm not sure when that happened, but we're gonna go ahead and address that now. Um, got some POR high temp paint. I don't know if that's the right thing or not, but we're going to cover these rusty areas and proceed with uh, finishing that up and getting the carpet back in this. All right, we've got the rear carpet removed and the new one is out here kind of sitting in the sun. You can see here, we're gonna have to kind of make these form to the wheel wells. And then also there's some cutouts that aren't in this new one. So you can see right here where the seat belts go here and here and then along the sides, uh, we're gonna have to make those provisions in this new carpet. So to get this rear carpet out, we had to remove four uh, of those little tie down hooks. So the first one is right here, and then you've got another one here, over here, and then back here. And since that was riveted in and we had to drill those out, we're gonna go back and put in nut certs in place of those. So that is a, a threaded uh, rivet. That way we can bolt whatever we want down easily. Making some progress on the Project Cherokee. You can see here we've got the carpet uh, 
started back in it. I wasn't super impressed with how it fits above the wheel wells here in the back, but hopefully time will uh, cure this with the wrinkles and whatnot. Um, but we did get a few more pieces that have come in. This is a crown uh, door check link. This is for the driver's door. Um, so that's the little thing that, you know, holds the door open. And this one here is popping and cracking and making all sorts of funny noises. So we're going to replace that in the driver's door. And then this came in from JCR. And that is going to be the steering box uh, inner brace. It replaces the triangle shape aluminum piece that's in there currently and then we've got some audio things and a light bar that's going to go on when it's finished all right as you can see here we've got most of the carpet in uh dash is back in we're going to put the steering column in as well today we've got the rear seat finished up and in this is a leather kit from cat skins so matt down there at morgan's auto trim in lenore city covered the seats for us and then this right here came in as well from JCR. We're gonna put that in today. That's gonna to be that brace for the console. So in this area of the console, that bolts down to these two little tabs here. Uh, so the console will be nice and secure and uh, won't have any issues wobbling. And then also too, you can see the carpet here. We had to cut out quite a bit for uh, the airbag stuff. And then it goes up under the dash uh, there's quite a bit of trimming involved with this. Uh, this is from Auto Custom Carpets. So I'm not super pleased with the fit of this carpet, but hopefully after it sees some temperature changes and the rest of the interior gets in, everything will be held in place and it'll look nice. We will probably add some WeatherTech mats to it as well. But uh, let's get this interior put back together. Oh, so you hear that, that means that screw is stripped out. So what I'm gonna do is drill those out slightly and then we'll put a screw that's larger, like a machine screw with a nut on the back side, which means I'm going to need a helper. So I'm gonna go grab someone to hold the bottom side while I tighten the top. All right, so the console has four screws in it. Uh, you've got one here by the four wheel drive shifter, one up here under the transmission shifter. And then of course now we've still got those two back here that go to that support bracket. So that support bracket is underneath the console here. And now you can see our console is really strong. We're gonna go find this little tab right here. I think we've got it on order, but uh, I need to check on that. It's been a little minute, but we are gonna go ahead and throw the rest of this console back together and get the steering column back in and make some progress.
Okay, we got the steering column back in and the consoles back in, but one key ingredient was this cable right here. Has to go in there to the transmission shifter over here on the console. So we should have put the steering column in before the console. I have to go back and get this corrected. Okay, it was able to, let me turn the light on here so you can see this. Was able to fish that cable in over here on this side of the console and reach under there and pull it through. And that snaps into the shifter right there. And what that does, that keeps you from turning the ignition off until the vehicle is in park. So right here you can see the ignition won't turn all the way off. So we shift it all the way to park. And now we can click it back to pull the key out. So it's more or less a safety feature for these things. And my daughter's probably gonna be driving this. So anything she can do to be easier on her, the better. The interior is just about wrapped up. We've got the seats in, except for the driver's seat. I'm gonna clean up my mess here. So we've got fresh carpet, fresh cat skins leather on the factory seats. And then of course that headliner has been redone. This little guy looks kind of crusty. So we're gonna see what we can do about freshening that up. But very pleased so far with the turnout. Thanks for watching this video. This is episode two of our Cherokee XJ build. Next video will be audio and dash completion.